Hello, Lawyers Rock. My name is Winnie Zhao, and I'm very happy to speak with you today about income revenue streams for songwriters in the digital age of music. I have a Juris Doctor in Law, and I've also been a music publisher for over eight years, working with publishing companies of all shapes and sizes. Today we're going to cover four basic streams of revenue for songwriters in today's marketplace. We've got public performance rights, synchronization rights, mechanical rights, and print rights. For those of you who didn't understand half of the things I just said, don't worry, because we're about to break it down. Songwriters who retain their copyrights and their musical compositions have the potential to generate the greatest income revenue streams. And this is because there are some creative deals that really benefit songwriters who own their copyrights. One of the most creative deals that we've seen recently is um, Sprite putting lyrics on their products in what's called their Obey Your Verse campaign. We've seen brands that have been integrating music into their advertising the past couple of years and it's a good stream of revenue. But the four basic streams of revenue tend to come from four basic types of rights. Performance rights are usually the largest continuing source of royalty income for songwriters. There are four basic performing rights organizations that collect performance rights on behalf of songwriters. These are also called PROs for short. The basic ones are ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, and GMR, which is a new one, Global Music Rights. There are also PROs all over the world that collect and engage revenue for songwriters within that PRO's jurisdiction. This means that if I have an American copyright and I want to collect income revenue streams throughout Europe, I might engage SESEM in France or GEMA in Germany in order to collect those rights within that territory. PROs license copyrights on behalf of others and grants those rights to different common businesses that will usually have to pay a public performance license. Why do they have to pay a public performance license? Because these are normally places that play music to the public. For streaming services, the fee paid to the PRO depends on whether that service is interactive or non-interactive. Interactive services means that listeners are able to interact and choose what music they want to play and create playlists. It's kind of like on-demand music listening. An example of a non-interactive stream might be terrestrial radio, where you generally know what kind of music will be played on a station, but you don't exactly get to choose which song you want to listen to. Pandora is also a very good example because they have a non-interactive streaming service where you can choose music that sounds like a band that you want to listen to without actually choosing that particular song itself. Next, synchronization rights cover the right to use music in quote-unquote timed relation with audiovisual imagery. There's many different types of synchronization rights, and this includes, but it's not limited only to, TV, film, commercials, apps, internet, webisodes, DVD, VOD, VOD is video on demand, SVOD, which is streaming video on demand, which is, in other words, Netflix and similar services. Also, live stage productions and grand rights. This includes Broadway, musicals. Synchronization rights can be used for independent film festivals, merchandise, video games, and the weirdest one that I ever saw was probably an exercise bike. And you're thinking, how does an exercise bike use synchronization rights? Well, this particular exercise bike had an audiovisual component so that you could actually watch a video and listen to a song at the same time while you're working out. So in that case, they were creating the original content and they needed a synchronization right in order to sync the music in time relation to the visual, the visual imagery. 
Mechanical rights are audio-only rights held by songwriters. A record company must secure a mechanical license from the songwriter or publisher on that songwriter's behalf in order to re reproduce and record the composition and release the music. A mechanical license is included in our music agreement package. Generally, mechanical royalties are generated from the sale of records that embody the compositions. This includes physical units such as CDs, as well as digital units um, that include digital downloads, ringtones, or media lockers such as Google Locker. For more information on the different rates, Harry Fox is a great resource. The next issue is covers. If an artist plans to re-record a previously released record, the musical community calls this a cover. It's just a re-record. While a composition may always have the same original songwriters, it can have dozens of covers. For example, the composition Baby It's You was written by Burt Bacharach, Mac David, and Barney Williams. This song has dozens of covers, and there are some very popular versions by the Beatles, the Shirelles, and the band Smith. So that's a really great example of one song that has three original songwriters and dozens of recording artists that have covered the composition. Under copyright law, the recording artist of the composition has the statutory right to make a cover version of the song provided that they follow the provisions of, under copyright law. One of the compulsory provisions, which means that this is something that you have to do, is you have to pay a proper rate. Under the statute, the statutory rate is 9.1 cents per composition per unit for songs up to five minutes in length. If an artist wishes to cover a composition, then they have to pay that full statutory rate and comply with strict accounting requirements. Last and certainly not least are print rights. A print license is the right of a licensee the user of the song, to either print the sheet music, the notes, or the lyrics of someone else's composition. Some examples include reprinting the lyrics in connection with musical apps, music apps on your phone, books, magazines, or on apparel. You might not be aware, but a person should not really make photocopies of sheet music without permission or reprint lyrics of someone else's music in their own creation or in other types of written works such as books. Also, you can't really do that without permission. In order to clear those types of rights, you need to contact the music publisher and obtain a print license in order for the right to use um, the notes or lyrics of somebody else's songs in your own work. Commonly, sheet music is used for orchestras, Orchestral performances will license what's called the rental of the sheet music from companies such as Alfred Music Publishing or Hal Leonard. Um, I used to play in orchestra, so um, when we had a new concert, we would get a big box full of all of the different types of sheet music for everything from flute to trombone to tuba and bassoon. So that's a really great example of licensing that sheet music from the publisher in order to perform that in an orchestral performance. Go band nerds! <laughs> Hopefully this information along with the examples that I've provided are helpful for you to understand more about how songwriters earn their income and also how you can go about licensing different types of rights for your upcoming projects. We'll include sources for more information and look forward to seeing you next time. Lawyers rock!